We'll read tonight from the 21st proverb, verse 30. It says this, There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. I know that sounds like a strange verse, but it caught my eye and my strange brain went to work on it. And I, and I realized that in here, there is a warning and there is a promise. These, these words here, if I were to put, maybe put it in a, a little more modern English than the way they put it here, it would, it would really mean that there, there is no logical argument or advice or help that a person can give God. We try that, right? I mean, occasionally. We, we try that. I, when I read that verse and I was thinking about those words, I, I thought about the time that I knew God had called me to preach. I, I knew this because my parents informed me. And I had learned down through the years that when your, my parents tell you that you were called to preach, that was it. You're done. You should just surrender because you're on your way to the pulpit. But I, I told my dad he had to be wrong. And I gave God very good counsel about why he was wrong. And God ignored me. It's, it's, a, it's just something that's kind of inherent in us once in a while. We want to explain God to God the logic that we have as to why he's wrong. The children of Israel did this, and, and we'll get around to uh, our, our generation, so hang in there for a minute. But the, the children of Israel did this, especially when they started to go into Canaan land, and, and the spies came back and explained everything to them. You know, it's, it's, it's good land, good grapes. Take a look at the grapes we brought back. It's full of milk and honey. There's houses there. There's everything God said, but of course now we've got to think about the walled cities, and there's giants, and they've got an army, and and on and on and go. And so let's think about this, and they begin to explain very logically why it can't happen, at least ten of them. If you look at their, their reasoning, there's nothing wrong with the reasoning. They're 100% right in everything they're saying. There are big walls. Oh, there are giants in the land. They had an army. That's all true. All the negatives are, are right there. The thing that they weren't focusing on, though, was that God had a plan. And his plan was to take care of all the things that were bothering them and give them the land. I suppose on a, on a personal basis, if we, if we say at an individual level, there's those moments where we look at this, the situation and we're pretty sure there's no way this can ever work out instead of realizing that God has a plan for dealing with the negatives. And I'm not pointing a finger at anybody and don't you come around and ask me how to avoid this and never do it in life because... I don't know how you never do this. It's easy to look at negatives. You just get in certain situations and there they are, right in front of you. Big walls. Big problems. We don't see the grapes anymore. We don't see that God wants to give us housing and safety and security. We lose track of that. And so we, we begin to reason why it doesn't work. And yet Caleb and Joshua stood there and looked at it and said, but if this is God's plan, if this is what God has ordained, we're more than able. Amen. Not because we're any braver than you are, 
Not because we really want to go and take on an army of that size. But it's just that we're able because God has said so. You know, the ten spies didn't really thwart God's plan at all. He just decided to use a different generation to get the job done. And that gets me to today. Because our world thinks, I mean, correct me if, I, if I'm wrong about culture today, but our world seems to think that if it fights against God and does everything God says not to do, somehow or another, the things that God said will happen won't happen. No, it just that's the, That seems to be the attitude. It can't happen if I don't allow it to happen. I told one of my sons one time, I, and I won't tell you which one, but I told one of my sons one time, I said, I want you to know something about God that, that your dad has figured out. <laughs> he says, I, I told him, I said, I, I discovered way back in the day when I was much younger, God is big. God is big enough to do what he wants to do, whether I want him to do it or not. And I said, furthermore, I discovered God doesn't go around conducting opinion polls like politicians do. He says, this is what I'm going to do, and he sets out to do it, and he is not interested in what humans think about it. He didn't think that was very nice. But I told him the other thing your dear old dad has discovered is God's not going to ask for your opinion on the matter. God's just going to do it. And I said, There's, there is a blessing and a cursing there, isn't there? Because the curse on it is God's going to do it. And if you're not living right, what he's going to do may not be so good. But the, on the other hand, if you're really seeking God and doing what God wants you to do, the fact that he's going to do it in spite of you is almost a blessing. Because at least it means it's going to get done no matter how good my faith is on the matter. No matter how much reasoning I have. This verse is really telling us we, we're not going to go around and, and share all of our wisdom with God and all of our knowledge and all of our counsel. He's not going to listen. It, it, it just reminded me of Job at the end of Job. What did God do? Huh? Where were you, Job? Huh? Where were you when I put Orion out in space? Where were you? When I created the big animals of the world. Where were you when I drug my finger and created a canyon? Where were you, Job? You didn't need any counsel about how things work in life. And I think the person in, that wrote this proverb is trying to tell us that God doesn't need our counsel. We need his we need his wisdom. Amen. Isn't that what the scriptures tell us over and over? We need him. Amen. We don't need to be explaining things to God. I, am, I, I have said this many times, but it still stuns me when I think about it on any particular day when I'm sure that life isn't going to the, according to plan, at least the way that I planned it. And that is that God has a plan for every moment of my life. Not, I mean, not just today, but however many years into the future, God already has a plan. He has a plan for handling every situation that's going to come up. When I think about that, that just, it's just, just almost jaw-dropping. That God would care that much about my life, that he would draw up a plan. And then he would go one step further, and as long as I trust in him, he will make sure that the plan works. Sure, yeah. 
For that, God doesn't need my counsel. I need his. Because the problem is, I don't know what the plan is. And part of the reason why I don't know what the plan is, is because I don't know what the future is. And as I have told my family, my extended family more than my two sons, but my extended family more than more, more than once, the reason God doesn't tell me what the plan is and what the future holds is because I'll mess it up before I get there. And he knows that. So he doesn't tell me. I try, I'm trying to tell them, that's why you don't understand about the future. They're just going, I don't know what the future holds. That's, that's a good thing. Be happy about it. Because you'll just mess it up. But we can find help. We don't have to worry about the future. You know, that song, I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds my hand. Right. You know, I, I don't know whether, what the clouds are going to look like tomorrow, but I, I do know the one that knows the future. Yeah. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. You've, you've heard me say before, I, I, in particular, I've told Troy, Troy, Don't talk to human beings all the time who can only open up their computer screen and tell you what's going on in the world as they look at the computer screen. Talk to the one that really knows what's going on. And more importantly, knows what is going to happen beyond this. He did that one time. He's actually learning to do it a little more often now, but he told me, he said, he, he, he came into a, a bunch of money before, it was about COVID time. He came into a bunch of money, and as he got it, he thought of all kinds of ways to spend it. He was going to have a great time. And then this little voice told him, you should take that money and pay off all the rest of the credit cards that you owe because you got enough money to do it. You should do it. He thought that was a goofy idea. But as he was praying on at church one night, he heard that same comment. You need, you need to do this. This will be good for you. So he did it. Weeks later, COVID hit. By the time camp meeting ended, the job he had had changed and he was out of work. And he came to me and he said, Dad, how did God know? I told him, I have no idea. I just know he knows. Sure. He got through that whole situation, and he was months without work. He got through that whole situation without having to have work on savings that he and uh, Caitlin had saved up because he didn't have any credit card debt to pay off. How did God know? I don't know how God knows. But I know this. He's got counsel. He's got wisdom. He's got understanding. That is all we need. We don't need to worry about helping God out even though it's great fun. But we don't need to worry about that. God will get along just fine without our help. But we're not going to do so well without his. Right. We need it. Amen. And as we see the day approaching, scoffers may tell us that the promise isn't sure. We'll tell them it is. Mm-hmm. They'll tell us that maybe God has changed his mind. And maybe that we'll tell him, no, God didn't change his mind. We've read his counsel. Right. We, we've read his instructions. Mm-hmm. We know what's going to happen. And we're looking for it to happen. Yeah. Because we believe that we have a word that is sure. A word from God that endures forever. It's settled in heaven, David said. Settled in heaven. That's what we're believing. That's our counsel. We want to not give God counsel. We don't want to try and reason with God. Even though I know it's the human thing to do. And we'll probably do it. And I'll probably do it again. But really what we want to do in the end is accept God's counsel, yes. God's wisdom, and it'll get us straight to heaven. Amen? Yes. Let's come and pray.